Starting with problem one. So A, what is the Euclidean space of the set of vectors? S, um, Euclidean space, this would be R4, because they have four numbers. Each vector has four numbers. Um, the coordinate unit vectors for that space, uh, for a four dimensional space, we'd start out with one, zero, 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 and then we'd move on to zero, one, zero, zero, then, zero zero one zero and zero 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 one so you start with one and you just move it through all the positions for c uh determine the unit vector of v1 a unit vector is the equation v times v write that on your equation sheet you would just do that calculation so the norm of v is going to be the square root of negative four squared plus zero squared plus three squared plus zero squared. Showing all your work, we'd have 16 plus nine or a square root of 25 or a five. That's not my final answer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that five, uh, one over five by that vector. So one fifth times a negative four, zero, three, zero. You multiply it through, your unit vector is going to be negative four fifths, zero, three fifths, and zero. And there's that final answer. Um, for D, determine whether the vectors are orthogonal or not. And orthogonality happens if our cosine, uh, or if our angle is 90, if they're perpendicular to each other. That happens if the dot product is equal to zero. So I need to go ahead and calculate the dot product between V1 and V3. So V1 dot V3 is negative four times zero plus zero times zero plus zero times zero plus, or no, three times zero plus zero times nine or zero. Uh, so yes. Because the dot product because cosine inverse of zero equals 90 degrees. Um, next one, using the determinant, uh, determine whether the set of vectors is dependent or independent. We just plug in all of our vectors into a matrix. When we do that, you'll notice that we'll end up with one column uh, that has mostly zeros. Notice this is a four by four. I need to use cofactor expansion. I can do it with this row here. So it's gonna be plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Um, so that means I have plus zero, minus zero, plus zero, minus nine times my remaining elements. Negative four, zero, three from the first row, uh, zero, six, zero from the second and then four, six, and negative three from the third. You can do that third one however you want. So um, I will, oops, I forgot a number. I'll get back to E. Um, I will do a uh, modified fish method. So four, six, negative three, maybe I won't. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and use column two. So plus minus plus minus. So I have a minus zero plus six times my reigning numbers. Minus zero. Um, when I keep doing that, I get negative nine. Come on, pen. Negative nine times six times, uh, I've got, now I can do the fish, um, 12 minus 12, which means this is zero, which means your whole determinant is zero. Therefore, uh, the set of vectors is linearly dependent. Okay, so my determinant is equal to zero. Um, therefore, my vectors are dependent. Um, if I do G, based on your answer, can the set of vectors be written as a linear combination? Yes. 
Yes, they can be written as a linear combination because they're dependent, which means that C1, C2, C3, C4, all of those exist. And then H, what is the space span by T, V1, and T2? Uh, if you look at V1 and V2, they are not multiples of each other. So um, if we look at uh, C1, V1 plus C2, V2 equals zero, if you just manually inspect that, you'll notice that the answers would essentially result in C1 equals zero and C2 equals zero. Therefore, they are linearly independent. And their span is a blank D space in R blank. Where this is two, because there's two linearly independent vectors in R4, because they live in R4. Or it's a plane in R4. Yeah, so there's their span. Okay, so going back to check, I did A, I did B, I did C, I did D, I did F, G, and H. I need to go ahead and do E. I'll do E right here. Uh, what is the distance between V1 and V2? The distance between V1 and V2 is the norm of V1 minus V2. So we're literally gonna subtract V1 and V2 together. So V1 is negative four, zero, three, zero. Minus V2 is zero, six, uh, zero, negative eight. When I subtract those two, I get negative four, negative six, three, and positive eight. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I can go ahead and take the norm of that. So the square root of uh, four squared plus six squared plus three squared plus eight squared. When I do that, I get 16 plus 36 plus nine plus 64. Uh, and when you add all of those together, we get um, uh, six plus, let's see, here's how I do it in my head. Um, these two make 10, these two make 15, so that's 25, so that's gonna be a five. There's a two there, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 125. This is a completely acceptable answer to keep on your exam. Square root of 125. Okay, so then I go ahead, double check, and I did E. So there you go. There is your solution to problem number one.